Hi Scorpio, this is Dana with Taurus Star Tarot and we are about to do a weekly update for you. This is a new thing that I'm doing. I'm going to do one big monthly reading at the beginning of each month and then every week thereafter we are going to do a weekly update to see how the energies are progressing and see how things are turning out. Doing um, one big huge reading a couple times a month just kind of keeps the same energy around and I get so tired of doing readings about the same thing over and over and over again waiting for our energies to change so that's how we're going to do it from now on if you would like a personal reading from me you can reach me at torrestartarot.com i'm going to give a little spiel at the end of this reading so if you'd like to hang around for that you are more than welcome and if not that's perfectly okay too so you come into this reading with the ten of pentacles right thinking about your future Clarified by the Two of Wands, planning for your future. You're in the hanged man mode. <clears throat> you're pausing, you're rolling things around, you're surrendering, and you're coming out on the other side with a new perspective. What you're thinking about in this hangman energy is what makes you happy in regards to teamwork and collaboration in your life. The wheel comes in and says that you are about to start a new life cycle. And I think, Scorpio, you are fully aware that there is a new, uh, a changing of the guard, a, a new tide coming in, right? A new chapter of your life getting ready to begin. The Ace of Swords comes in and says that you have some mental clarity about what it is that makes you happy in regards to the Three of Pentacles and who it is that you want to take into this new life cycle with you. This mental clarity has not been without a minute of struggle, though. You have thought good and long and hard about it with the hanged man, um, the hangman to the hermit. All of this in between is what you've been thinking about, right? You've done some soul searching, some introspection, and you've come out with some mental clarity about who it is that you want to take into this new life cycle with you. The king of wands showing up like a boss, right? Coming out of the hangman energy, coming out of the hermit, which is the best place in the world to be. I love the hermit card. It's the only place we can be alone, right? So coming out of hangman, coming out of hermit, you present as a boss, right? As the king of wands, very passionate. You would like to take some very passionate forward motion, right? You want to take some action towards achieving what it is that makes you happy and who it is that you want to take into this new life cycle with you. But you're tempering yourself, right? You're holding back. You're tempering yourself. You're tempering yourself in regards to the lover's card, right? In regards to choices that you're making about harmony and love in your life, in your relationships. This person that you would like to take some passionate action towards, some, some motion, some progression towards, um, represents as the devil, right? This is a card about somebody that you are um, very attracted to. You have a lot of chemistry with this person, but for some reason you have limiting beliefs about this person. Maybe there's an age difference. Maybe there's a race difference. Maybe there is a cultural difference. But there's something that restricts you about going forward with this person. This is why you're tempering yourself. You'd like to. You'd like to just roll on in as the king of wands and say, baby, get on because this is where we're going. But you're not. You're tempering yourself in regards to a choice about a love relationship, somebody that really, really does it for you, but for whatever reason, there is uh, some kind of hang up here with this person. The tower moment comes in and says, not no mo. <laughs> the tower moment comes in and gives you a, this a, a huge epiphany, a revelation and an awakening about your feelings for this person. The King of Swords comes in and says, you are about to make a decision. You are about to make a decision, right? You, you have clear thinking, authority in your own truth. So this tower moment back here created some kind of truth in you that you can't deny. You just simply can't deny it. 
The princess of swords says that you are thinking, you're formulating a thought pattern. A, you're making a plan, right? With the princess of swords, you're making a plan. So you had the epiphany. You have absolute clear thinking and power in the truth that you have spoken to yourself. Now you're formulating a thought pattern and a plan. Strength comes in and says that you need you need some strength, right? You need some strength because this, this is not an easy thing to overcome right here. Limiting beliefs. I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing to overcome. It's really not. So you're going to need some strength to execute this decision right here. The Nine of Pentacles comes in and talks about a culmination, a culmination to this tower moment, right? A culmination to to your limiting beliefs and, and, and a sense of self-sufficiency, not so much as far as finances and monies go, monies, coins go, because it is the nine of pentacles, but a sense of self-sufficiency in that you know what you know now, because you've had this revelation and this awakening right here. What you know is how you feel with the king of cups. This is a card about uh, emotional balance and control. It's He's the king of water. He's the king of love, you know? So you have, you have some strength and you have a sense of self-sufficiency about how you feel in this situation. It has been a struggle for you to get to this point. Because there has been some pain, some heartbreak, maybe some betrayal, definitely some sorrow. Maybe you're afraid of rejection. Either way, it's been a struggle for you to get to this point because there is some emotional pain going on right here, right? Prince of Swords says you're about to put out some action oriented communication. You're about to reach out to this person right here. You're about to reach out to this person and, and tell them that you would like them to go into this next life cycle with you. The Seven of Swords. Now this card, yes, it is about betrayal, deception, shady behavior in general, but it's also about breaking free of, of, those feelings. It's about breaking free of shady behavior. This card is also about keeping something on the down low as well. So I think it's a dual purpose card for you. I think you're breaking free of these mental challenges right here with the devil card. And I think you're just keeping it to yourself for a minute with the temperance card as well. But you're about, you're about to, to go forward with the Prince of Swords. You are going to present yourself to somebody. You are going to give your cup, right? You are going to deliver this cup, knights or messengers, right? Deliveries, they're the delivery system and they require action. So you are going to take action to be somebody's quote unquote knight in shining armor, right? This is a card about romance and charm. The Queen of Swords, there you are executing this decision right here. You are pulling the trigger and you're executing it. Of course you are, because you're sending forth um, communication, action oriented communication. Justice, you have spoken truth to yourself, cause and effect, right? What is the cause? The cause is you getting strength self-sufficiency to move forward and deliver these messages to the person, to, to this person that you want to go into your new life cycle with. What is the effect? The effect is the five of swords. The effect is that you are open to change. You're open to change and you are about to deliver messages of feels to somebody. This is a messenger of creative new beginnings. It's the princess of cups, the page of cups. It is, it is a messenger of, of, of feels, right? You're about to go forward and offer your feels to whoever this person is that you've decided is going to make you, uh, not make you happy because nobody can make you happy, right? Your happiness comes from within, but to this person with whom you believe that you can find relational happiness 
with that you've thought about for a minute, that you have mental clarity about, that you want to bring into a new life cycle with you. Passionate messages, passionate, just passion all the way around with the King of Wands, sitting there like a boss, knowing that you are the shit, right? Wanting to take action forward, but tempering yourself because there's something about this lover that has some kind of restriction attached to it. And you're beginning to release limiting beliefs about this, this person with the tower moment, an absolute revelation and an awakening king of swords, clear thinking, intellectual power, authority in your own truth, the princess of swords, getting ready, formulating a thought pattern and a plan, getting ready, gaining some strength, culmination to the situation with a sense of self-sufficiency about how you feel. Struggle's been real. There's been pain. You may be afraid of some rejection. Prince of Swords says action-oriented communication. Seven of Swords breaking free of any kind of restrictions in order to be somebody's knight in shining armor romance and charm. There's the queen of swords. There is you executing this decision. There is justice applied to the situation, cause and effect, right? Five of swords comes in, talks to us about being open to change. And the princess of cups comes in and talks about um, being a messenger of feels to somebody about to break out and, and give and, and tell this person that, um, that you want to be with them. And there you go, Scorpio. That is your reading. If this is where we part ways, namaste, my friends. If you'd like to hear my spiel, just hold on about one second. All right, the spiel. Super important to know the three element, the three most important elements of your birth chart is your sun sign, which today is Scorpio. This is how you receive information from the world. It's important to know your moon sign because that's how you feel about your world and that's how you process your emotions. And your ascending sign or your rising sign is how you give that information back to the world around you. It's very important to know those three signs so you can cross watch not only for yourself, but if you're watching for somebody else, you can cross watch their readings as well. That will give you a much more comprehensive um, evaluation of the things that are shaken down in your lives right now. It fills in the gaps and kind of brings the ambiguity of a general reading um, a little bit to a point, right? You can also use that information to deal with the people in your life as well. If you know how somebody receives communication, processes communication, and returns communication, that means that you can direct your communication in the right way to get the response that you're hoping to get right? I gave this example in one of the previous things was the Pisces reading, right? I'm a Taurus. So if somebody comes to me and uh, like, like your kids, just for example, okay, I'm your kid, right? You come to me and you say, clean your room. And I'm like, eh. But if you come to me and you say, you know what? Cleaning your room is like a dollar fifty of your allowance. If you don't clean your room, your allowance is going to be short a dollar fifty. And me as a Taurus is like, what? No, uh, I better clean my room, right? I want that buck fifty because I got, I got stuff to buy. I got, I got toys and and gumballs and whatever it is kids buy these days. I got to go buy that. I want that dollar fifty, so I better clean my room. As a Pisces, Moon sign and Rising sign. If you come to me and say, clean your room, it's $1.50 towards your allowance. Being a Taurus, I might be lazy. I, I really may. I, I may be lazy enough to say, eh, you know what? A buck 50, big deal. I, I'm, it, I'm good. I'm good, right? But if you come to me and say, it's $1.50 of your allowance if you clean your room and if, if it will help me out, it'll help mom out, right? It keeps me, it helps me keep things organized and under control and in check. 
So as a Taurus, I'm like, ah, the buck 50. And then as a Pisces, I'm like, oh, it'll help my mom. I want to help my mom, right? Because I'm a Pisces. I'm all fishy and watery and I just want to love everybody and help everybody, right? And then I spit it back out as a Pisces. As a Pisces-Taurus combo, I spit it back out. And, and the result is, okay, I'll clean my room because I really want the buck 50. I could live without it, but if it'll help you, mom, I'm going to do it. Right? Right? You understand what I mean? So if you know those three elements of the people that are most important in your life, you can understand how to gauge your communication to get the results that you need. And the only reason that I want to bring that up is because I just want you guys to have success and happiness and peace in your lives. And that is a tool that I learned way too late in life and I use it all the time. Okay, so there you go. That's the spiel. If you want a personal reading from me, 40 bucks, we'll hook it up at TaurusStarTarot.com, a reading just for you, just for your situation. Namaste, my friends.